Tense moments for this family in Arizona after their child was stung by a scorpion. Morgan, he was playing after lunch at school and uh, they have these big cement tunnel things that they were playing in. They were digging in the sand and he got bit on the finger. And I got a call probably half an hour after he got bit. Went and got him, he was crying that it hurt. Next thing I know, he comes to me and he says, Mom, my legs aren't working. <laughs> I can't walk. Tens of thousands of people in the United States are stung by scorpions every year. And hundreds of those stings are potentially deadly, especially to small children. So what can you do to survive a scorpion sting? Dr. Leslie Boyer, a medical toxinologist and a specialist in venomous bites and stings, shared her expertise with InsideEdition.com. The bark scorpion is famous for delivering in the tiniest, tiniest little dose of venom, one drop injected using the stinger at the tip of the scorpion's tail. A nerve toxin that is so potent that it could kill a baby. Scorpion venom injected hypodermic-like under the skin of the victim that is stung by the tail of the scorpion. Yet not every scorpion sting is serious. If you step on a scorpion and you're stung on the, the callus of your heel, there's a good chance you're not going to get any venom delivered at all. So even though it's a sting, it's not an envenomation because the, the liquid venom may spill harmlessly onto the surface of your heel. In that case, it hurts. It's like having a nail driven in your heel, but, but that's it. It's just pain. Dr. Boyer says those most at risk are the very young. Babies have skin and just below the skin subcutaneous tissue that is so well perfused with blood that not only can that scorpion stinger sink up to the hilt, but after it's delivered the venom, it's taken up very, very rapidly by the rich layer of capillaries and lymphatics that supply the skin of the baby. What this adds up to is, if you are a small child, this is a dangerous sting. Parents should know the symptoms of a scorpion sting in a baby. Screaming and crying goes beyond what a parent normally expects. In fact, a baby that screams and cries and then 15 minutes later falls to the ground unable to walk, is drooling, screaming a whole lot more. This is not subtle. The baby will be thrashing uncontrollably. They're inconsolable. You can't cuddle a baby that's been stung by a scorpion because the nerve poisoning itself is causing their limbs to thrash. It makes their eyes roll around in their head in a very eerie and, and unnatural way. And the particular scream that they make, the cry, is unearthly. The nerve toxin in scorpion venom can impede a child's ability to breathe. The most important thing is that they keep breathing. And if they're having trouble choking and drooling, put them in a position where the drool can go out instead of down the wrong pipe. So um, holding them carefully. Uh, look and see while you're waiting where the scorpion is so that you can get rid of it so it doesn't sting anybody else. Dr. Boyer says applying ice can help with the pain. Unfortunately, an ice cube won't do anything once you've got the whole nerve syndrome that babies get. But for an adult in pain, it helps a lot. But if your child is stung by a scorpion, you need to get them to the ER as soon as possible. You get them to the emergency room. And at the very least, they're going to have their airway tended to. And in Arizona, in pretty much every emergency department, they're going to have at least one vial of antivenom. Within an hour, the baby will be looking significantly better. Within four hours, totally fine. Fortunately for Morgan, his family was able to rush him to the ER. He was then taken to a hospital in Tucson where he was given an anti-venom and he survived. He even was able to play baseball the next day. Of course, the best advice for protecting your family from scorpion stings is to avoid them in the first place, especially at home. The way that you keep insects and scorpions out is you make sure that the threshold underneath your door is tight. When your light's on at night, the bugs can see that line of white light between the bottom of your door and the floor, and they'll follow the light indoors. Sealing your home up, having the threshold closed nicely, that's a first step. Parents should also move their child's crib away from the wall. In the baby's bedroom, 
you probably want the crib not to be pushed up against the wall next to the curtains because the curtains are next to the window and the window is next to the adobe wall and the scorpions climb the adobe wall on the outside, come in and get on the curtain. All you have to do is move that crib two inches and they're not gonna get in the crib. Important advice to keep your family safe from those warm climate arachnids.